What's going on, everybody? We are back. Podcast 55. This is Jason Williams' pod. Uh, so first off, college basketball. We've got some upsets to talk about. Upset of the year, in my opinion, Loyola and Marymount goes into the kennel and upsets Gonzaga. Uh, Cam Sheldon had a go-ahead basket with 13 seconds left. It snapped, which is insane. Gonzaga's 76-game home winning streak. And now the highest is like 24, 25. So that was unreal. That was like one of the longest ever. Um, but yeah, they had, Loyola Marymount had lost 25 straight to Gonzaga before this game. So, man. So two big streaks. End it. End it. Yeah, I mean, that's hype. That's my upset of the year just because it was at Gonzaga. They don't lose much, obviously. The streak says. Uh, but yeah, Loyola Marymount. I got 14 and 7. They might be a Four. tournament team. Maybe. Might be a sleeper. What does this mean for Gonzaga's like rest of the season, though? I don't know. I think uh, the the conference is so easy. I th- I bet they lose to St. Mary's in the conference, but they'll lose. That'd be like about it. So I think they'll end up a two or three seed just because they don't play enough like competition, and they beat good teams early on. Right. And uh, I mean they beat Kentucky. So yeah, I think they'll be fine. But definitely shows that they're down a little bit, uh, and it just backs up all the arguments that people will be making. So yeah, next up, number one, Houston. Not anymore because they lost. The second game of the season to Temple. Temple upset them at home. Uh, so now I don't I don't know what they dropped to. They dropped like four or five. Something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now Temple's beat Villanova and Houston uh, this season. So Temple's a team to beat. Uh, I, I can't remember who their head coach is. He's a new coach, though. And he's got he's got them playing right. Uh, but I think Houston will be fine. They've got solid defense. I mean, their other loss was Alabama. Yeah. So you, you can't fault them for that. Very one. solid team. Yeah, very good basketball team. So uh, Houston's going to be fine. They'll be yeah. a one or a two, uh, most likely one, because they probably won't lose anymore. Uh, and they'll probably win their conference. So they'll, they'll be a team to watch out for, though. But now, let's get to our teams. Uh, a lot to talk about because both our teams are hot. So Kentucky, we played Texas A&M at home Saturday. We won 76-67. to Texas A&M was unbeaten before we played them in conference, so they were 5-0. and um, And, cool stat, we took the most threes in a game uh, for Kentucky since 2011. We took 32. So, I mean, that's not a lot for a lot of teams, but for Cal's teams, yes. Um, we didn't hit a lot. I think, I think we were 11 for 32. So once they'll start falling, we'll be really dangerous. But then we went on the road uh, last night, um, and we beat Vanderbilt. 69 to 53. So crazy stat. We've beat them 14 times in a row. So we haven't <laughs> lost to Vanderbilt since 2016. Uh, wow. But they play us close every year. So I don't know how that's still holding strong. But uh, yeah, so good win. It was like a, a no sweat win, people will call it. Uh, that's the first one in a while. So I mean, it, it's just good momentum going forward into what comes Saturday. Uh, we'll spend a little time on this. So Kansas comes into Rupp. Um, and then you all have the Texas matchup. Um, but this Saturday, the 28th, the Jayhawks are coming. They've lost three straight games, though. So that's good and bad because that keeps them within a couple games of the all-time wins record. But it's also bad because you know they're going to be hungry. They lost to uh, Kansas State, TCU at home, and then at Baylor. So it's been good teams, but uh, it's not a good look for um, Kentucky. But uh, I was saying earlier that – Whenever we lost to South Carolina, that was such a bad loss. But then we beat the Vols. I think it just wiped out. So we need the win against Kansas uh, to have like on the resume to be able to uh, have an argument for a higher seed in March. So, uh, yes, yeah, so talk a little bit about the Texas game. What, y'all lost by, what, one to them last year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all got to yeah. get the payback. So we're definitely going to be hungry for sure. Um, we play them this Saturday. Uh, what would that be, the 28th? Eighth. Eighth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so y'all played twelve SEC six, match at six that day. Yeah, but yeah, it's looking forward to it. I'm yeah, getting pretty excited. Um, both to the same kind of record. Um, both like seventeen and three, I think. Both top ten too, aren't they? Seven. I think Something so. Like that. Yeah, it's a top ten matchup. Um, so Tennessee, we have jumped uh four spots. I no five, five spots. spots. Yeah. Went from nine to four. Um. So we'll talk a little bit about Joel Phillips. He won SEC Freshman of the Week um, this past week. So yeah, he's playing cool. good. He's definitely playing good. No, definitely a good player for y'all because, I mean, I feel like y'all don't have a lot of like playmakers like that very often. Mm-hmm. Like y'all always have good guards and good bigs, but he's like a a guy that's kind of do it all. So yeah. 
Yeah, well deserved. He, he balled out this past week. But um, yeah, so for both of our teams, I think this Saturday is a must win. Uh, not only for the SEC to prove that we are better than the Big 12, but uh, yes, exactly. I mean, it, this would be huge for the resume going forward. Um, and so I talked. I was talking about this earlier. Andy Katz uh, released his previous most previous bracket a few days ago, and I said the Vols are a one seed. So that that's assuming y'all will win this, and y'all just keep playing the way you are. Uh, but did you see this bracket at all? Mm. So this was so this was interesting to me. So we were a ten seed, right? You know, ten seven matchup. The seven seed was Duke. Wow, that would be the most anticipated first round matchup ever. Um, and there's a chance it'd be very likely it'd be in Iowa. So I think that'd be the the wildest ten seven ever. Uh, but I mean, we're both down this year. Well, I would say we're not down anymore. We started out really rough, so the ten is understandable. But um, yeah. So what do you think about that first round matchup? Um. Yeah, very anticipated. Uh, that'd be crazy. Who are you taking in that game? I would, I would take the Cats. You'd take the Cats? Yeah. Um, just that, that's just crazy to be a first-round like game, Yeah. in my opinion. Um, I think we do have the edge uh, position-wise. Um, their whole team is two players. Uh, they have Kyle Filipowski and uh, Jeremy Roach. So... Those are kind of the guys. I, Phil Pasky would give us fits, but Oscar would dominate down low. Um, but they're also like, new lineup, too. Um, yeah. That y'all are playing with right now. Y'all are super hot now. Um, if y'all keep that going, yeah, I don't I don't see that game being really a problem. Yeah, I, that's how I hope it is. I, I really don't want to play them in the first round because I just hate – I hate the thought of playing Duke with a chance to lose. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'd be crushed. But I would feel confident going into it. Um but how good would it feel if you win? If you knock Duke out, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't even think we've played Duke in the tournament in my life. If it, if we did, it was early. Uh, but the last memory I have, well, not in my life, but uh, of Duke is the 92 Leitner shot. I'm not going to talk about that too much. But, mm. uh, yeah, so we definitely got to get some payback in the tournament. So that would be a, a big bonus to it. But, uh, yeah, if we were to lose, I would be crushed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a side note real quick, we've talked about the recruits a lot. Um, Kentucky has four McDonald's All-Americans. So three three on the east, Edwards, DJ Wagner, and uh, Aaron Bradshaw, and then Reed Shepard's on the west. Uh, with Both lineups I feel like are loaded. But I need your opinion on this because I think it should be five of our players. So if you look, Rob Dillingham is – so those, those guys are ranked one, three, and four. Mm-hmm. And then Reed is like twenty two. Rob Dillingham's ranked eighth, so obviously based on numbers he should be in. But he was labeled like ineligible because he plays for the overtime elite league. I feel like that's kind of messed up. And yeah. the reason was uh, Donda Academy, Kanye's school got you know, like when he got like canceled and all that, that like went away, so he couldn't go to high school anymore. So he went to the overtime elite uh, like program, and um, so they're saying like since it's not a real high school or something. They're saying he's not allowed to play, which... That's crazy. Yeah. And if you, like, hear all these, like, NBA players and stuff, they say McDonald's All-Americans, like, that's the game that you'll never forget. And, like, the experience that you get hanging out with the guys for, like, a week. Uh, I just feel like that's kind of messed up. Like, I don't care where... I don't care if he was at Kentucky or anywhere else. Like, I feel like if you're that good, you should be invited to the game no matter where you're at. Uh, But, yeah. Y'all can argue that. I think it should be five. But, uh, yeah. So, we just got four of them. Getting into the NFL. So, crazy, crazy uh, weekend this past week. First game, Jaguars and Chiefs. The Jaguars go into Arrowhead and did what not a lot of people thought was going to happen. They competed. So, the Chiefs won 27-20. to But Patrick Mahomes got hurt. So, I mean, Chad Henney came in, balled out. Uh, but the Jaguars, very bright future. They surprised me this year, especially towards the end. Uh, I think they surprised a lot of people. But, um, yeah, really young squad. Uh Couple of the, a couple of good draft picks, and they'll be back in the same spot next year. It, I mean, if not farther. Because that, that was a very close game. Uh, but for the Chiefs, they advanced to the fifth straight AFC championship, which is insane. And the stat, I think Patrick Mahomes is like sixth all-time in most conference uh, championship appearances. So, wow. already. He's been in the league six years. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, that game was just wild, but Chiefs move on. Fifth straight, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, hopefully the Jaguars can do something about that in the near future. I hope um, so. But yeah, future's bright for the Jaguars. I think if they just, you know, clean up the defense just a little bit, I think they'll be all right. Um, yeah, no doubt. But yeah, bright future for the, for the Jaguars. Yeah, no, that's definitely a team. When everybody's talking about all these, like, next quarterbacks, people tend to forget about Trevor Lawrence. I think um, it's because in his first couple of years, he kind of – People started doubting a little bit, kind of, you know, fell behind, wasn't performing, that people, he had high expectations, basically, coming into the league, and I think he, people thought he underperformed, and now I think he's getting his shot, and I think at the end of this season, he kind of took advantage and showed that he's the guy. I think if they also add some weapons, they've got Evan Ingram, uh, like, they've got decent receivers, but if they can get some superstar, hey, It's almost like they need, like, that one, like, Number one wide receiver, just like yeah. the playmaker. They don't like, truly have a one. They, yeah. have, they have guys that were like threes on their teams. Like, right. Yeah, they just need that, that one. So maybe a draft pick. Uh, Trade up something. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. I think that's the next move they got to make, though, yeah. for sure. Um. So next game, Giants versus Eagles. Um. Honestly, I did not think this game was going to go the way it did. I was kind of wanting the Giants to compete, but it did not go that way. Safe to say, <laughs> they didn't compete. <laughs> Um, the game is at Philly. Eagles win thirty eight to seven. Um and the score shows of what the game basically was. Yeah. Um Philly came out hot and stayed hot throughout the whole game. Yeah, it felt like the Giants couldn't get anything going. Yeah. Throughout the whole game. Eagles uh, had two hundred and sixty eight yards rushing. Um That's ridiculous. You have that kind of stats. If you're putting those numbers on the ground, uh, You're you're not gonna lose many. Yeah. To say the least. Yeah, they, they bought out. That was really surprising because there was a lot of people that were like, the Giants don't have a ton of postseason uh, like experience, mm-hmm. so we'll see how they uh, match up. And then uh, they basically just shut everybody up. The Eagles dominated. Yeah. I wasn't for sure the Giants were going to win. I was, you know, I was picking the Eagles to win, but I thought it would be a more close game. I thought they would give them more of a run for their money. That's kind of yeah. what I thought, too. The Especially Eagles, after how they played last week, too. Yeah. So... The Eagles, hopefully, this coming week they can beat the Forty ers But we'll get into that later. Yeah, I mean it. They're hot. So, uh, but the next game, this was very anticipated. Um, after the sad like game ending stuff that happened, was it week fifteen, sixteen? Uh, it was like late in the season. Sixteen, I believe. But uh, so they finally get the matchup: Bengals versus Bills in Buffalo, Cincinnati. Didn't care. It was basically a home game. The crowd was crazy for Cincinnati, uh, and they just dominated. Like twenty-seven to ten was the final, but I think it, it felt like it was way more than that. It felt like the Bengals, like their defense, defense played great throughout the whole game. They only yeah. had one pick, but Josh Allen had no uh, passing touchdowns. Had the one rushing touchdown, but uh, yeah, they played great. They went up fourteen zero. Never looked back. They went up fourteen zero quick. Um, but yeah, they were clicking all over like. Every wide receiver was playing good. It, it just felt like they never – I felt like I remember never one sack. <laughs> yeah, it felt like they were moving it every play. Uh, it was just positive games, like, no matter what was happening. Like, no matter what they were running. So, uh, yeah, that game surprised me with how dominant it was. Um, and, like, one-sided. But So, I asked you this question earlier. Do you think um, Josh Allen is like – we talked about the Phillip Rivers 2.0 comparison – do you think he's that guy? you think he's the guy that just can't get over the hump and can't beat the good QBs? Um, well, if you take the past two years, it really does look like it. Yeah. Um, no, but I think – I don't know. I feel like they just need to do something because in this game, I just felt like he was always getting hurried. Like, it, he was yeah. always – always had pressure on him. I feel like he didn't have time or he was always getting up off the grass. Like, um, it was just crazy. You could see – on his game jersey during the game. It was just all green yeah. stains on the back where he was either getting sacked or hurried or, like, having to run. I just felt like he didn't really have any help. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, to follow that up, you think Diggs is gone? You think he's trying to leave? And no. I saw the, the at the end of the game, he's like... Yeah. Yelling at him. Um, but then didn't, didn't he tweet something out saying that y'all are quick to uh, not criticism for... Uh, it was like how did he say it? Y'all criticized my actions, but it was. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that does make make you like feel a little better if you're a Bills fan. But yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe he's just sick because 
obviously two years ago was the Chiefs. Last year was the Chiefs. Now it's the Bengals, and it's just – I mean, you're never going to avoid them. Like, yeah. they're, they're going to be – and they're all the same age. The receivers, the quarterbacks, like, that's the, those are going to be the teams that you have to beat. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so – if I'm Diggs, I don't leave right now because... Uh, yeah. I don't know how his contract is and all that, or if he left, how much they have to pay him, or if his contract's up, I don't know. But I don't I don't think he's gone. I think he likes Josh Allen. I think they play good together. Um, they just need to figure out. Cincinnati's a good team. I mean, it's the playoffs. Yeah. But, yeah, he he could be in the, the playoff um, hump, slump, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um. Yeah. I did see like an interview from like two last year, two years ago, uh, where Diggs was like, "Hey, that's my quarterback. I'm gonna listen to whatever Seventeen does. Like, uh, that's my guy." So, I'm not saying he switched up, but you can tell there's not all the the not same the same bond or something. Yeah, but I think sometimes it takes that little setback to like go yeah. to the next level. So, I mean, in Kentucky terms, we lost to South Carolina, and it's been completely different since. So maybe that's what this is: the three straight years. Of just season ending and hurt. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I could see it. I could see this being the complete turnaround. They have the talent. Like, yeah. There's no doubt about that. The Bills are going to be a competitor every year if they keep the same team. But I just think they need something that will get them to that next level. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, they they were very, very close to getting a one seed this year, too. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, all that stuff had happened with, like, the game having to get canceled and stuff. So, uh but yeah, I think if they, I they just got to keep the same guys. They've got Singletary, James Cook, like they've got the talent at every position. They've just got to make sure they keep them. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's only up from here. Like you can't have this much talent uh, and like continue to lose. You're gonna get yeah. through the hump at some point. Um, but you know, as a Bills fan, they got to be hurt because they they lost. They go to four straight Super Bowls and then they lost all four. Yeah, it was like three or four, and then now they're going through this like. Yeah. Everybody thought they were back, but, you know, <laughs> they might be. I'm not going to say, I'm not writing them off yet, but, uh, right. yeah. So, Bing was dubbed. So, speaking of a playoff hump, um, Cowboys versus 49ers. Um, legendary to say the matchup. Least, yeah, legendary matchup. Uh, a lot of history between these two teams. Um, so, to say the least, it's hard being a Cowboys fan out here. Uh, so, San Francisco, their defense played great. Yeah. Um, the Cowboys. The score shows that the Cowboys was like good enough to win. I would say yes. But there was a couple plays where you were like, oh man, come on! But there's just like those big chunk plays that I felt like um, were giving up. Trent Williams, yeah, Forty Niners. Um, you know, I'm sure you've seen the clip. Uh, he was walking down Michael Parsons, but then you know Michael Parsons was still. Getting everywhere. So I don't think it was the best game our defense played, but it really wasn't a horrible defensive performance. It was more on the offensive side um, for the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, the final was 19-12. to 12, Niners win. Um, so a big topic I want to talk about is the last drive. Um, so what what is your opinion like on what happened on the last drive, well, basically? Okay, so everybody, like, to forget that the play before was Schultz not getting out of bounds. All right, he yeah. went out of bounds too early because he only got like the one foot in. Just yeah, caught the ball, went out of bounds. In that situation, you have to make sure both feet are down yeah. and then get out. And so y'all are another Bad habits. Y'all are another twenty five exactly yards up at that is. point. Yeah, and we were like, "Yo, that can get it to the end zone from there. That yeah, you got a chance." But then it gets called back, and then y'all are back way out of like arms reach. Mm-hmm. So uh, obviously, you got to try to make something up. And I get what they're going for on the last play, but I feel like there's no way you can only have skill players in. Because you know the 49ers ain't changing no defense. Like they're they're still gonna have defensive linemen, linebackers in, like so I think having Zeke snap the ball <laughs> is not the best decision. Uh it just sounds like weird talking about Zeke snapping the ball, but if y'all didn't see it, like he just got lit up. Like you've gotta have a lineman in that situation. If you're trying to incorporate Zeke, just throw him like in the slot. Like yeah. just do something different. Uh, I kind of get what they were trying to do, like Will Hook and Lighter, like let uh, well, what's it, is it Turpin? Is that the, yeah? I mean, yeah, try to let him catch it, maybe pitch it back to Zeke, but I don't know. I know Dak was going to like run. I, I don't know. It just seemed like a play that worked 
on a scout team in practice that wasn't trying. And they're like, you know what? This might work yeah. against the best defense in the NFL. And I just think that's a huge mistake. Um, that's well, just coaching like wise. But what was supposed to happen was one either he wasn't supposed to throw the slant to Turpin because Zeke got absolutely demolished. Yeah, and Dak like panicked, or. It looked like he was supposed to throw the slant, and Zeke was supposed to slip off of him. Where Turpin can catch it and just toss it back to Zeke. Yeah. And then he had all those people on the right side uh, to come behind him to do the ladders and stuff, um, or the laterals and stuff. But offensively, I just felt like I don't know. It just it sucks. Another year. Um, this is twelve straight playoff appearances without making the NFC Championship. So um, it's definitely a rough. Uh, Rough drop for the Cowboys. Yeah, but hey, as bad as it is now, once y'all finally get out of that hump, it's only up from here. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it can't be unless you just don't make the playoffs. But yeah, we'll not bring that up. So, I think, like, where do you stand in the whole Dak argument? Like, you want to keep him, or you think he's just not the guy to be able to get you to the next level? We said he's the same. Uh, uh, what like win loss record as Tony Romo now? Yeah. So two and four. Um, what was it? Two and four, uh, playoff uh, record, and then in the division round it was zero and three. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, you think it's time to move on? He's still what twenty nine. Yeah, like, but so he's still young. Yeah, he's but... like twenty eight, twenty nine, I think. But Dak, I just I don't know if he's. No hate against Tony Romo, uh, one of my favorite quarterbacks personally, but he could never get to the next big game. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, 2014, kind of got cheated. Yeah, y'all won. Um, we'll go ahead That's and say. right, Kat. <laughs> Not getting too much of that because I could talk all day about that. But it just feels like he's a good player, but I don't think he's the guy to make that next step. Because um, some games he – Looks really good, like yeah, impressive. Like no picks, four hundred yards passing. Like and we talked about the Bucks game. I mean, he balled out. Exactly. Yeah, perfect example. And then you see this game. He has two and three picks. Like I don't know. I don't know if he's the guy to get us to that next step to go to the NFC Championship and go play for a Super Bowl. Yeah, I just think like Tony Romo is extremely slept on. I think he's a Hall of Famer. People argue either way, but. I think Dak is just like good, and he'll never be great, great. as yeah. like Troy Aikman was, and like there's just that certain level of player that you've got to be to get over that yeah. like certain little like point, and then uh, I don't know. It, it's like once you get past that point, I feel like it's just like something holding the Cowboys back, yeah. and once y'all get to that NFC Championship, it's gonna be like dangerous. But yeah. I just don't know what it is. Like I don't know, like I think. I'll give my opinion. I think it's part of upstairs, the management. Um, yeah. Jerry Jones, he's been there for a while. Um, could That's the owner of the Cowboys. Could start with him. Could be, you know, Coach McCarthy. I don't – we don't know. Do you think McCarthy should be fired? <sighs> I don't know really how I feel about him right now <clears throat> because he was kind of falling off at the end of his Green Bay years um, before he picked them up. Um, we we're doing great in the regular season, like yeah, twelve and four. Like I don't, I just we can't get to that next step. It's like we're frozen. Like we just can't yeah. get over the playoff home, as we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's like a curse. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, win some Super Bowls in the nineties, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. I think y'all definitely got to get back to that point, especially because of how many people hate the Cowboys. Yes. So I think that would be something that would make you like... Cowboys franchise gets a lot of hate. Yeah. I'm one of like rare people that doesn't like like or hate. Like I just... Like I'm just whatever. Like yeah. there's a lot of people that hate and uh... Yeah, but I, I don't know what the next moves are but something got to change and like whether it's I mean head coaching change, quarterback change. Something. Yeah, something's got to adjust because it's not 12 straight playoff appearances without an NFC championship. It's I not. feel bad for after this we'll move on but I feel bad for C.D. Lamb. You know what a year yeah. he's had. He balled then, out. You know it's just like team just can't get to the next the next level so. Yeah. Uh, but I mean we talked about it there was a chance of him like 
where we thought there was a chance of him leaving with showing his like mm-hmm. anger and stuff. But I think he's here to stay because after the rest of that season, I mean, I'll, you can't leave at that point. Like, yeah. And he played well in that game too. Um, if he would have got that catch on the seam up the middle, I don't remember who the linebacker or whoever it was. Yeah. He like wrapped around. I was like, man. But uh, yeah, CD's CD's legit. He's the future for sure. So you just got to get the right quarterback. I feel like part of it is Dax like under pressure throwing mm-hmm. because that that first pick, the one on like the left side. I think he was throwing to Gallup, but that was one of the worst throws I've seen an NFL quarterback make. I was like, bro, you threw it like – like they always, those are always those breaking routes you throw it before yeah. they even break so that it's timed up right. That one was like – he like waited until he stopped after the break and like – Yeah. I was like, yeah, that was so – like you waited way too long. I don't – I think it's a mental thing for him. Like I don't, I don't know what is holding him back, but man, I just hate to see it. Yeah. But getting into the other quarterbacks that are left – I think it's safe to say the next generation has arrived. Definitely. Tom Brady's not in it. Aaron Rodgers not in it. But we've got Joe Burrow, 26 years old. Patrick Mahomes, 27 years old. Jalen Hurts, 24. Brock Purdy, 23. That's the final four That's quarterbacks. Kind of scary. Kind of sad almost. It's sad. Like, it really is. The uh, quarterbacks and players that we've seen growing up and play, like, they're not in Yeah, they're the not even right in the playoffs. Yeah, no doubt. That's sad. Uh, our generation is, you know. Fading away. Um, there's only one that's still... Or there, uh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady are both still balling. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just wild to see this young of a group of quarterbacks. Yeah. Like, 27 is the oldest. That is ridiculous. But, uh, so, a question that I saw on... I think it might have been, like, first take. But, and I can see an argument for it either way. So, I want your complete unbiased opinion. If Joe Burrow leads the Bengals to the Super Bowl and they win it, do you think he takes the spot as the best QB in the NFL? <laughs> wow. That's big. <laughs> I'll share my thought after. Okay. Do you go um, If he wins the Super Bowl this year. Currently, yes. Okay. Yes. So, my thought is, obviously back-to-back Super Bowls gets one of them, but Patrick Mahomes going to win the MVP this year. And when people were talking about, like, so he's, I think he's 10th all time in, like, playoff touchdowns, um, 6th in, like, like I said earlier, 6th in, like, the uh, conference championship appearances. And, I mean, he'll have two MVPs. He'll have one Super Bowl as well uh, and five straight AFC championships. Like, I just think it's unreal what he's been able to do after losing what he, like, mm. Tyreek Hill was the one last year. I, I think that was his main guy. Lost him. Everybody's like, he's down. Like, yeah. the Chiefs ain't gonna be set. They ain't gonna be the same team. And they're doing this. They got the one seed. Uh, he's gonna win the MVP. Yep. I think it's still Patrick Mahomes, no matter what happens. But Joe Burrow's the only one competing with him for that that throne. Yeah. So you think if he does win the Super Bowl, you think he's got it though? I can see. Yeah. I can see that. New generation. This the quarterbacks we named all the new ones. Yes. Currently, yes. Yeah. Um. People's arguments were like, the way he plays is just flawless. Like, I've seen a comparison. People have been talking about a comparison with Joe Burrow and Peyton Manning. I can see just it. how he acts, how he carries himself, how he plays. Joe's comparison to Peyton Manning. That's yeah. awesome because I am a huge Peyton Manning fan. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, I think those two are chasing what Tom Brady is. Mm-hmm. They'll never get there because seven rings is absurd. But I think that that's like what they're trying to reach is that level of like dominance. Like, like it, it's been to the point where you're like, you got to play Tom Brady. You're like, oh my gosh, bro. Yeah. That's what they're trying to get to. They're like, oh, we got to play Patrick Mahomes or we got to play Joe Burrow. Uh, but yeah, I can see either way. Joe Burrow is the best in the league or Patrick Mahomes. But I think that's the top two. People have been arguing Josh Allen. I don't think you can even argue it at this point. Like, he's got to show something in the playoffs. Like, regular season can only mean so much. But, uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's get into the games. So we've got the AFC Championship. The Bengals go to Arrowhead and play the Chiefs. I'm going to go with the Bengals, 34-27. I'm also going to go with the Bengals. It's going to be a tough game in Arrowhead. Um, I got Bengals, 42-37. Do you think Patrick Mahomes being hurt uh, will hurt the Chiefs at all? Like, um, do you think that it could get ugly? Maybe. 
possibly, but not too bad. Um, I think with how Chad Henney played last week when he came in, that gives him a lot of confidence. Yeah. But Mahomes I did is, see that uh, they're practicing Patrick Mahomes as if he's going to play. Like, yeah. it's just completely normal. Mahomes is tough, you know. Uh, last week when he got hurt, they were mad they took him out uh, for so long. Um, but, no, I, I really don't see it being a setback. Obviously, with the high ankle sprain, he's not going to be as mobile. But right. it's still Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. He don't need it. He does some crazy things. Yeah, yeah he'll, he'll figure it out. Um, next, we've got the NFC Championship, 49ers at the Eagles. So the 49ers are currently on a 12-game winning streak. Their longest winning streak since 1990. So, I mean, if you want to talk about teams that are hot, that's got to be the number <laughs> one. Brock Purdy is undefeated with them. Hopefully I didn't just jinx them because I'm going to take the Niners. I'm, I think it's another defensive battle. Uh, I think the 49ers win 23-17. to I can see it. Um, I'm not going to go Niners on this one. I'm taking the Eagles um, just because, you know, have some beef with the 49ers right now. Yeah, that is true. Um, and the division. Yeah, so. and the division. Uh, no, Eagles, also a very hot team. I, the, the Cowboys, yes, have a great defense, but so do the Eagles. And the Eagles also have an outstanding offense. And... I just think since we played the 49ers so close, I feel like the Eagles are hmm, – I don't want to say this. I don't know. I got the Eagles 27-13. So, um, outside of – like, so a non-QB, who do you think has to play the best for the Eagles to get them this one? Because mm. I think it's got to be Jalen Hurts, but outside of him, who are you taking? Outside of him? Yep. Hmm. I don't know. Who do you think? Honestly, I think probably Miles Sanders because of how that rushing unit was. If they can even halfway copy that, I think this is Mm -hmm. an easy dub for them. Because that 49ers defense is ridiculous. The box is crazy. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, and I think the most important will be Jalen Hurts getting the ball out to the receivers letting them make plays. So, um, But for the 49ers, I would say non-QB – I think it's got to be Debo Samuel because I feel like he hasn't done a whole lot. Christian McCaffrey plays well every week. Um, I think it's one of those two that's got to show up. Like, I think IU, Kittle, the, they always show up, I feel like. Um, but in these big time games, a big time player's got to show up. Yep. And, uh, I mean, you got a rookie quarterback. So you've got to, you can't let him take all of it. So, uh, and you got to make it to where he's not nervous and he's confident yes. that once he gets it out to Debo or hands it off to, Christian McCaffrey, that they're going to make a play, and it's not all on his shoulders. They've been so. talking about how cool and confident Brock Purdy has been. Yeah, uh, it's how impressive. How collected he's been playing, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even play like a rookie. Like, nowhere no. near it. You wouldn't know it. Uh, he doesn't play like the last pick in the draft. But uh, And if y'all didn't see it, they've already announced that they're going to be sticking to Brock Purdy over Trey Lance. After Trey Lance was picked, what, four? Yep. Like three or four? Yeah, I think it's crazy, but I mean, I don't know why you not. Think they keep him as a backup, or try to trade him away and get something else. I feel like there's a chance they could get some nice picks for. Trey that's Lance. what I was thinking. If they're keeping Brock Purdy, a rookie young quarterback that's just took you to the NFC Championship game, um, yeah, I say you trade Trey Lance, get something else. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, and Trey's still young. Like I, I think he's still yeah. he still has a really bright future ahead of him. Um. But, yeah, so we go different on that one. We both have the Bengals um, in the AFC. So, you got any last things before we um, head out? Enjoy some championship football, and then Super Bowl will be right around the corner. Yep. College basketball at its peak right now, too, because SEC Big 12 yep. Challenge, the last one, which is sad. We Very won't be doing sad. this challenge anymore. So that's why it means. It'll be the ACC. What it means to win this game. You know, uh, in, in basketball, I've never really got your opinion on this. Are you the um, the new era where you're like, all right, let's score 100 and beat a team. I don't care how much they drop. Let's just score 100, outscore them. Or are you like, let's just beat them 52 to 50, defensive battle. Like, what, what, what's your, yeah. your defensive that's how guy? I mean, Because that's how Tennessee plays, and I love that, that we play like that. Because I feel like most people don't try to play like that. Um, I just like the physicality and the defensive game. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would take like the 50 52 rather than let a team drop 90 on us. Yeah. I'm only asking that because I think there's a good chance that y'all end up playing Virginia in the ACC challenge. Yeah. That game might be like 
60 combined points. Because y'all, <laughs> y'all both would be insane on defense. It's like and 10 to 12 halftime. Dude, it literally could be. Uh, but now, yeah, scoring I think more be. points is more exciting, I guess. But yeah. I feel like it's feels even better like winning a good defensive game. Like, I don't, yeah. That's just me. So how are you in football? Are you like a ground and pound, like we're going to run it? Yep. Run it through a mother ever yep. face, Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> yep. So I, I'm the I'm like the opposite. I'm just like score 100. If you score 120, ain't nobody matching you in uh, basketball. And then in football, I'm like, all right, let's throw it 60 times, run it five. Like, I don't know. That's just how I am. I'm just more like, I don't know. I just like the more exciting. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll just outscore you, out athlete you, or something. Like, I don't know. I just wanted to see your take on that because I feel like there's a good chance y'all play Virginia. Because that's one of the top teams in the ACC every year. So, yeah. yeah. But you got any any closing things? So I got it. Podcast 55. It's been real. Yeah. So before we go, happy birthday to the kid tomorrow. <laughs> so hey, go happy birthday you. in the comments. Uh, <laughs> turning uh, 16 now. So Yeah, yeah. 16. Fi- finally crazy. driving. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, throw a comment down below wishing the kid a happy birthday. Thank you all for tuning in to yet again another podcast. Peace. See you.